Suddenly your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before through the static you hear a woman's voice. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once. But our words are the only ones you can I make know you're out. I'm feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Says the shadowy figure behind the machine. This is the pale That's generator, a pleasure, huh? Officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance, but here we are. The voice is coming through the whirlwind of pain. No, sorry. The voice coming through the whirlwind of pain is not malicious. She doesn't want to hurt you. Where'd she ask him? Doesn't wish to hurt you. Not according to your ear canals. Wait, no, not even your ear canals. It's going directly into your neural pathways. Covering your ears doesn't mean anything then. Don't cover them. Ow, maybe that was a bad idea. That was an awful decision. Why would you not want to shield yourself from it? It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. Ah. You're under arrest. Hey now. Check this out. Please don't. She turns the dial in her hand. Ow! God, was that twice in a row? You're overwhelmed with a new surge of violent static. Feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. What's I'm happening to me? You and your partner have been caught in its field. Is Kim okay? He hasn't said anything in a while. Please don't have murdered the most beautiful boy in the land. The explosion of static you're hearing. It's the Ulam frequency. Blasted from that pale emitter Fat Angus mentioned. Fat Angus said you had a pale emitter. I saw your equations. It's the Ulam frequency. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? Well, I expected as much. Though well, I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. I'm a goddamn genius. This is one through six eight four one. This is three seven eight nine one three oh three. Cause this is <laughs> Should probably check on Kim. That's what good partners do. Right, right behind, behind you, officer. officer. Oh, fair enough. Eyes closed. The lieutenant is doubled over. He's still alive and breathing. Compressor is used to sort of make the pail more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pail. Literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale. People lose their minds in just a few years. A few years? I'd go insane in like a day. Sounds like she knew someone who used to man one of those stations, but she won't tell you about her. Boy, you're one empathetic police officer to have guessed even that right now. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. He gestures towards something with this great effort. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. Yeah, and that's probably a horrible idea, even if I did make a dance song out of it. But maybe that's our savior. Start a dancing! Is a large Don't do star that. Number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you might be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She's been holed up in here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking, and you might just get an opportunity to break loose. Hmm. Have you experienced the compressor yeah, yourself? I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. How did you get your hands I on this thing? Myself. She nods towards that torture device. I'm guessing this patent is. Oh, yeah. Fuck's sake, Way Kim. Beyond. She studies her death ray and the law officials trapped in it. Will I stay like this no. forever? Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like walking out of a very confusing dream. I feel... I seem relatively together right now. I'm asking proper questions. Mm, three, four, two, four, five, five, seven, nine, seven, Terracalis. Mm, Palinara, oh, I'm, I'm met in the films. I'm met in the films. 
Move to Druck. Four, four, six, four, five, four, four, eight, two, nine. So great. But let's talk about the man who was yeah, killed. Let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not cops. And of herself, merely as prey. Please, could you turn it down so I could ask something? It's better than the one we had before. The other one was like, I can't take any more, please turn it off. really important to say. You can do it through the white noise. Two, three, six, one, eight, nine, two, eight, one. If you're looking for a deal on mattresses, shit, 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 Oh, Rosaline. Oh, Rosaline. That's what I assume that sounds like. The lieutenant clutches his head. Grimacing. She regards you and Kim Fine. with sudden empathy. If you sympathy. really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. She steps reluctantly out of the shadows. The pain lessens, but I already knew that you are, so you didn't need to. I could have flashed my detective skills. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader, not like the murder weapon. It doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Let's keep it talking. You'll get through this. It's only three meters between you and the machine. If you keep it distracted for long enough, maybe. Be careful when you make your move. That'll be it for questions. Bide your time. Man, I got a little, why do I have so much pain threshold here? Oh, it's because I've got the fucking multi-tool, okay. I can break it? Fair enough. Ah, how did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. By hiding bullets on the floorboards? Oh, so you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. She didn't rat you out, by the way. Isabel, the washerwoman. So nice. She smiles a little smile. It's one knife I didn't want to find in my back, as opposed to the other knife she's finding there now. Hardy, for one. You don't need that. Not anymore, no. It's gonna turn out pretty bad for me if you hadn't walked right into 25 bands of ultra-high frequencies. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. It was dark in the shack. The waves outside had calmed down. She had a loaded gun. Then she cracked the barrel open and took the bullet out. Not today. Did you shoot Lally? No, I didn't do it. I only upstaged the lynching. Oh, I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. So she says she didn't do it, and she doesn't trust you. Is it you specifically, or the citizen's militia that she distrusts? Who ratted me out, by the way? Is it Titus? No, she hesitates. He wouldn't have broken first. It was your girlfriend. She cracked. Actually, you're right. Class, yeah. Do we know that? Do we know that they were a... Because that'll be a really good way to undermine her. Or to, like, break down... Because that is some detective shit right there. You're right. Class, yeah, was the first to share her suspicions. Oh. Only the kitten had claws, but... Not like this, she smiles sadly. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Oh, you First guess wasn't entirely off. Time to send his police, ma'am. They told us that you were on the coast. Even now, Kim is a paragon of professionalism. He's trying to make a clean cut of telling us she was betrayed. She pauses, taking it in. Oh, fuck. Those guys liked me. I know it. This is what happens to people and people like. A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck do the rest of you get by? Wait, wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal. I opened him up. I did, didn't I? And now you've come for me. She scoffs. <laughs> but fuck him all the same. I did make her forgive him. A little. Hmm. I do it by asking questions. And I have some for you. Like what? She adjusts her grip on her gun. I already told you I didn't do it. Strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself.
We n I believe that it wasn't her. Then again, drama hasn't popped up to say it was a lie. Yeah, I believe it. Would you say that Lely was a likable person? I didn't like him. Hard and mercenary types aren't particularly likable. Sorry, hard and mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. You ever feel sympathy for Burks? It's hard work. Plenty of broken people who come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure, and I didn't like Wild Pine sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. I hate to be the bearer of bad sightings, but I don't think she's perjuring herself. Could you say a normal word when I'm having my ears ripped off? She didn't hate him, okay? Oh, thanks, Empathy. Really helped me out there. I have other questions. Ah! You're running drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry. She shakes her head slowly. So, hard to go, Tommy fucked me over too. Never trust a musician. That really comes as a blow to her. Maybe twist the knife, just in case. Make it more desperate? No, drama, that's wrong. No, he didn't. I found my own way in. Okay, great. You got him in my lorry on your own. What now? You're gonna arrest me for drug trafficking? A bitter smile. Beneath it, she's relieved that Tommy didn't betray her. You had a financial incentive to kill the Merc. Man, it's to get away from all that murderous shit that I left Jamrock. My previous employer for the Union. The lieutenant is unable to articulate his question. She deliberately avoided naming the mob she worked for. We might be able to find this out later, though. She turns the knob. She turns the knob down just a millimeter and continues. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never really had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun. She glanced at it. It's only been used for self-defense and serious scum. Eh. Now it's going to be easier to reach the machine now. But you're threatening us, threatening us with it. Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious scum. She responds, holding your gate. I've done good things ever since. I guess she hasn't really been in the loop down here with her bondage machine. Do you have an alibi for when Lily was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. There were ten minutes they couldn't account for. Actually, no. They said you'd left to... I was half an hour missing. You went out. Like, fuck, I did. I was in the whole time. I went for a leak. 10, 15 minutes match. Hold on. No one takes a 15 minute leak. Look, fuck you, man. I might have also stopped by the bar. She speaketh the truth. Our investigation... Ugh, has shown that 15 minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Wow, now I'm curious. Please explain. Play pinball much? No, not since I was 14 and hanging out in the only diner in Dardan. I haven't been in a low-risk, no-reward game since moving to the city. Why? There are some mysterious pinball machines and some pretty mysterious rooms in the whirling. Yeah, probably some ghosts from the time of the suzerain. I'm not really interested in supernatural mysteries. Wait, what kind of mysteries interest you that now, for fuck's sake? Shame because I happen to be a paranormal detective. Ah, about elevators. You like elevators? Oh, fuck it, ask about the mysteries. Not murder mysteries either, if that's what you're thinking. She looks you in the eye impassively, making it clear she's not planning to comment on the matter any further. Yeah, ask about elevators. Fuck do elevators have to do with anything? Do you or don't you? Not particularly. Not even... Quaint old rickety ones? I'm not really into old shit for old shit's sake. God damn it, the lieutenant grabs his head. So you know she's not an antiques enthusiast. Not my jurisdiction, man, but it also doesn't sound like she used that secret route. At all. Look, there's a secret way from the ground floor of the whirling to the roof. Don't know it, but also, she frowns, studying your face. Shot couldn't have come from the roof. Or we would've all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned that. The pain stops him from finishing the sentence. That didn't go super well. You gotta lay something better on her. I mean, it, no, this is, our, this is our main theory being ripped apart over and over. You have a gun. 
Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I'm the Oh, sorry, I said the wrong thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck off! God, this is a long fucking sentence as well. Yes, 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 yes. Other questions. Good! You have a gun! And? Uh. I know you don't like old things, but do you sell antique rifles on the side? Never really got into weapons trafficking. Especially not old weapons, they break too often. And you don't want unhappy customers among gun collectors. Where'd you get it? The gun store? What gun store? Trigger Happy Jacks. Really? Trigger? What did you think? That I'm gonna squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, not that kind of girl. See, it's a front loader. Do you have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. A breech loader? No. This is such a wipeout. Can't quite tell. What kind of gun is it? A Natchway 80 front loader? Two barreled. Not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. That isn't it. There's other evidence I ought to ask you about. Does that to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Classier's rooftop. Yeah, sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. Got the only reason you hung out on her roof? Feels pretty bomb too. And you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah. One with Classier. So great about our antenna. It's very powerful. I used it to tune into the RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. 85102322933. Come in. So you're sure you didn't shoot the back from the roof? Yeah, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, shot outs come from afar. Okay. Let's take a step back. Yeah? Where? Oh man, there's a lot going on here. Ah. I could nudged it during the drugs tour. Oh, I did? I didn't even freaking notice that I did that. Ah. Tell me your version of the Sunday night. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. She's refusing to adopt the demeanor of a cornered animal, a leader with no one to lead. She still wants to retain some control of the situation. It's okay. We just want to... Ah. Alright, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with, the, with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. And Classier comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves, so I grab a seat next to her. She see right to you? Oh yeah, super. I didn't think too much of it at first. I'd seen a party art before. Classier said you knew something was wrong immediately. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. Wouldn't be a first for him. But no such luck, she was in some deep shit. Asked me just to come upstairs. The mic she'd been going, up, going with was lying on the bedroom floor. Dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so... Yeah. You made it look like you'd been hanged. How did you manage to come up with a plan so quickly? What? No, faking a lynching was her idea. Her idea? Yeah. Cold blood. It really surprised me. How quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind, wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the Hardy Boys. Classier knew exactly what she was doing. You can't remain calm under pressure otherwise. She lied to you. About that too. Showerhead. Oh, resourceful. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you... Do you think she killed Lely herself? As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if this is true, Lieutenant forces himself to finish the sentence. What are you worried this lynching might lead to? What? Huh? She purses her lips. Yeah, the thought crossed my mind. The mercenary's death wasn't going to have repercussions anywhere, either way. Although, the way things were going... Hmm. She doesn't want to talk about this. But not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. Ah, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. What did they do to you? We can't ask about that? Who killed the Merc? If it wasn't you? How should I know? 
So I keep saying he already had a bullet through him when I got to him. And there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. There's rings around her eyes, a tired voice. She's been staying up late listening into the con listening in on conversations crisscrossing Martinez. Police radio. You've been following the case. Who hasn't? She shrugs. You know, I can still see him there, in Classier's room, lying on his side. It was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he's been dead for a good long while. If you didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't going to stick around for a questioning by a goddamn the Puta Madre agent. What do you mean, the Puta Madre? She looks at you quizzically. Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. Fuck, what? Ow, come on, really? Not now. Through the sudden sharp pain in your head, you hear the lieutenant mumble something to himself. Fucking hell. Well, fucking hell. Like me. You hear through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Who's everyone? How do you know this? Everyone in Jamrock, the cops, the criminals? Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray? Waiting for you! If she knows that about you, she must know your real name too! Tell me, what's my name? If you know that about me, you must... Know my name? Harry Dubois, she replies quickly. One corrupt motherfucker with a disco plan, some funny tie. Agent of Laputa Madre. Someone mentioned a fucked up tie? I call bullshit! You're too crazy to be corrupt! So she knows your name. That doesn't mean you're on the take. Criminals make up bogeyman stories about cops all the time. All this just means you're effective. Criminals know you, and are scared of you. I've heard of Pula Puda Madre. He's dangerous, right? Is that a joke or a threat? I'm guessing both. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to know about all this. I lost my memory recently. We can't say that. No, that was a real question. Yeah, sure. She doesn't believe you. I'm sure the Peter Madre himself will explain it all to you soon enough. What did you do to this Madre anyway? You've been to my lorry. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? She pauses. And now I have Harry Can Opener Dubois in my. Oh, sorry, Harry Can Opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. I thought we had an agreement, she thinks. This was not supposed to happen. She's not gonna change her mind that easily. She still perceives you as a threat. Wait, one thing. Possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you singular or plural? She might know something. When I came into town, was anyone with me? Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to him, anyway? Who was in this squad? Well, it wasn't this scrawny dude. She nods to the lieutenant. You had two guys, and a lady. The guys are pretty buff. The lady wasn't bad either. What else could you tell me? One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other a brooding, had a brooding something or other about him. And the woman? The woman was the only one in uniform. All were carrying. That sound about right. No. No, sorry, no idea who these people are. Literally. Satellite officer Vic... Vic man looks out of the window grimly and puts his coffee down and turns to patrol off some minnow. We can either take a room here in the whirling or go home for it for today. Let's go home, Jean. That's gonna happen today. She responds quite... Oh, sorry, it's a woman. Uh, Jean takes his blonde wig off. Call Idle Storm. You can give us a ride. I think I know them. They're in Martinez. Mmm, friction lock set. Don't leave me here, please, Solis. Fantastic. Well, I gotta get on the road. Then you can go find your friends. Unless you have anything pressing to ask me. Do you know about the bunker? Next door? What bunker? The communist hideout. Back there. Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I set up camp. But I'm sure I'm not the first bag vagabond to... Her voice trails off into the white noise in your head. Feels like an aneurysm approaching. Uh, I don't have much health left. And there are Amber, and Starburst, and Sunshine. 
24 degrees centigrade. We have to break it. We have to. We can't lose this. Oh, thank fuck! I was really, really worried that was gonna go badly. What are we even gonna do? You're not gonna try and stop me whatsoever? You're not gonna shoot at me? What is going on? Apparently we're gonna murder her as well. Okay. That makes all the sense in the world. You did it! Compressor light's broken on its side and it's quiet in your head again. Still hurts like hell, but... Hey, Kim. See those fireworks? Were you okay, Kim? Uh, Lieutenant Unches, recovering. All good, officer. Be careful. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Ah, fuck it! She puts the barrel of the gun into her mouth! No! What are you doing? Problem solving, she mutters. Man, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are- Oh, yes it is! Please, Rhetoric, don't fail me now. Oh, thank you! She's truly desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. What options, though? You know. Maybe I can still talk her out of it? This is- this is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. Please. Put your hands up. Just walk away. She stares at you, frozen. The gun's still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. And something shifts in her. Gratitude. Doubt? She's still ready to go. You don't have to do this. You're not cornered. I'm letting you go. Day of miracles, she says, pulling the gun out of her mouth, eyes still fixed on you. And she turns her gaze to the tunnel behind you. I'll take it. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant. Disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good call. Lieutenant is still unsteady on his feet. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I would have done the same had I not been incapacitated. He couldn't take it like you. It irks him. Then he gets over it. I think she didn't do it. He looks around, then points to the back of the cabin. A tent. We should check it out. What the fuck is happening around here? I'm so glad I bought a few extra drugs, man, or I would be so dead by now. Dark water trails into the distance. There is no way out. Some drugs. Oh, well, thank you so much for the drugs. I appreciate it. Oh, it just boosts by A. I thought it was like three at once. I should have guessed that. Cooking utensils. She has done a thing that I didn't read. Oops. Uh, before we go in the tent, let's look at this. Eight real! That's what she's been living on this whole time. Well, well done, you poor now. What do we got in here? The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene, spelt wrong, lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Alright, well let's go take a look. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror on the books. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. Lieutenant peeks in over your shoulder. See anything? Sift through. Rager Monthly. Journal of Material Science. More technical digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine, it's a leather notebook. A notebook. Take it. The pocket, you pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like right now. I mean, absolutely. fucking lootly let's go ahead and take a look. A well-loved journal with a brown leather cover and the brand name Schneller embossed on the back. It seems to have served as a loyal friend to a lonely traveler. A thick journal. The cover is worn. Like someone used it to carry it around, used to carry it around in their back pocket. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back covers of the back cover sports an embossed brand name Schneller. We know that Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, beloved among architects and engineers. It's got good taste. Must have taken whatever she recorded on here seriously. Unwind the strap. The journal falls open. 
About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. Large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. What kinds of logistics? Hard to tell, exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor. Sketches, calculations of a distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appear to be attempts at st attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. Hmm. How far back do they go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. Hmm. What did she write the day Lely died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's ba well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except... Hmm. That's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. Hmm. Oh man, we failed the logic thing? By one? Oh fuck. Okay, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Um. Hmm. Anything? Oh, do I have a point? No, I don't. Fuck! Okay, that's fine. Anything about Laputa Madre? I read the wrong. I pressed the wrong thing. The name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. Small wonder. Would you talk about Laputa Madre in your journal? You do see an M, though. Laputa Madre. M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Read the entry from the 9th first. Great. M's peon is coming to town. No need to. No doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head. While I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, this isn't what I've been doing ever since I got... Isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? Were you supposed to find her? Even apart from the investigation then? On M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. Am I sure this is a mistake? Look at me. Whatever you may look like, you don't feel like a hired assassin. March 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave. Or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I made a made it a point to believe in the best believe in the best in people. The boys, for example. But experience tells me. Uh, did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. Oh, that was my thing being finished. Okay, I didn't realize what that was. The call was a courtesy. He must have held her in high regards. Personally tell her he knew about her plan to run drugs with the competition. Look at the cover again. And I flip through the page. Sorry. What's the most recent entry? Most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime. Even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that, forever on the run? Not really my idea of the open road. And I was really looking forward to winning. The, l the lieutenant taps on the page. It looks like she might have been framed. And 
would be a first or a fourth. But who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good we didn't catch her. I wouldn't go as far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. He frowns. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us. Especially if she has problems with the Madre. Kim? Am I really a Laputa Madre agent? He looks at you straight in the eye for a moment, then sighs. No, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting. His trust is well placed. You aren't. You can feel it. And who do you think killed the Merc? Could have been Titus. And again... T-Man wouldn't fuck me over! <laughs> Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. Somewhere along the way, we might have been fed a lie or two. One thing is for certain. We have business back at the Whirling and Rags. Questions to ask? We should get to it.